We are back for another episode. But it's just the two of us and no, we're we're not gonna break into song. We're gonna hold that. <laughs> hold that in. <laughs> yeah. But it is just the two of us on this episode. Don't worry, we do have more guests lined up uh, that we are very excited about. Um obviously it's been a little bit of a break since just you and I had a chat, Sammy. So yeah, it's been a bit of a while. Let's bring back in our lovely little what have you been creating recently? question and I'm gonna obviously throw that one at you first you at me first um yeah it's been busy it's um over the summertime a lot of people sort of like oh it's summer things are quieter you can do some reflection I'm like no 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 literally we're busiest time um I guess because lots of lovely people want to launch and have new fresh things ready for kind of September time before Christmas before the year's out all that kind of momentum I think that probably starts in spring and then it feels like it's quite busy in the September when you're kind of getting into the weeds of the project so I've just yeah been kind of finishing off a couple of lovely projects um one is a landing like branding and landing page we've kind of it's been really nice actually to kind of plan out the timeline but then actually talking to the client and going through the strategy process actually kind of working out what they need not just long term but what do they need now and on this particular project we realized that although we're not going to launch the full website until January next year she actually needed she was having conversations and some really good conversations like I don't really have any like anywhere to point these people to so I was like okay well let's sort of split this up because we're going to work on your branding now anyway so the business is starting to come together and those foundations are getting put in place um and let's create a landing page so at least there is somewhere for people to go so um that's been nice so although we're kind of on a pause um we've got a nice big chunk of the project done but more to come which is nice um so that has just gone live and then another lovely client um needed a kind of a big refresh on their website they'd done their website themselves um you know done a good job with with what they with what they did but obviously knew that they kind of needed something that was a bit more of a level up more professional uh bring more sort of proper identity into it and so they didn't really have a properly designed logo etc cetera, etc cetera. so we've just launched their website as well and branding and I got a message from her this morning to say like oh just put my logo on my letterhead and it looks amazing Aww. so I was like yay um so yeah she's really pleased so that's really nice and it's always kind of nice to have that sort of wrapping up here's all your goodies and your logos and your brand guidelines and um and let me know if you've got any questions so yeah I've kind of been doing a bit of launching which always feels like clients fleeing the nest which is also a little bit sad because I feel like oh I've worked with you for quite a while now and I'm gonna miss the chats um yeah, so that's what I've been up to. What about you? Gorgeous. Um, it is always kind of bittersweet thing when mm. you send them off with with all of the bits and pieces and go, right, you're out in the world now. Yeah. I have been working with my first local business since moving to the forest, um, oh, which has been obviously a real milestone for me. And they are, if I say they're a foodie, I mean the foodiest foodie you've ever met. <laughs> um, that <might> person. <laughs> yeah. And um, admittedly, I was kind of, you know, doing that weird fangirling thing about them for pretty much a year. Um, I knew about them before moving to the forest and then we've been, been in there pretty much every week. <laughs> Since, um, moving here and so getting to work with them has been a real wish list item because I've missed working with food businesses um, since stopping my own food business. Um, so we did a messaging workshop and I presented their ideal client document and their mission statement. And we actually walked through that this morning and got loads of wonderful feedback and um, the music to my ears part, which is, do you know, I was looking at that ideal client document and I could really see how I could 
be using those messages on my pages and what I need to actually go ahead and write now. Perfect. It's <laughs> <That's> the dream. <laughs> this is what I want for you. Yeah. Really start visualizing it. That's brilliant. Yeah. Um, I've got a teaching teaching opportunity coming up around November time. Well, two actually in November. I'm doing a bit of teaching and guesting over the next few months. Fabulous. I've got lots of projects lined up for October, lots of it blogging. Um, everyone trying to get sort of big chunks of their blogs sorted for the months ahead uh, before things get really hectic um there'll be more but of course my brain won't come up with the goods right now <laughs> what else I've been creating recently yeah no exactly I know it's, it's easy to forget isn't it when it's sort of in the midst of everything because I did that talk with the small business hive on yes of course you did crafting your uh website for online success which was lovely obviously always get really quite nervous beforehand and obviously overthought my presentation because I wanted it to look all beautiful of course the kind of the pains of being a brand designer it's like the pressure to be on brand um but no it went really well and there were some lovely questions and yeah it was lovely to hear that some people have been inspired to go away and make some changes and to again it's like people kind of and, I, you know, we all do it and I do it myself, but kind of overlooking that special magic that you bring and what you're interested in and what your business, those value pieces that are in your head. And then you sort of forget that other people don't necessarily get that without you sort of telling them and explaining it or having blogs on it. Um, So that was really nice to see somebody have a bit of a light bulb moment of like, wow, I'm interested in all these things. I'm like, that is gold. Get it out there um so yeah it's always nice to support fellow small business owners um I think with what you were saying there about oh is it people have it in their heads so to them it's kind of they've ticked it off because well I've thought about it it's in my head yeah so I don't really need to do anything else with it I can skip that step of putting it on paper and actually pushing it out there because people will just get that by some kind of telepathic osmosis <laughs> yeah exactly it's sort of like you know I know what my business values are and I'm interested in this and this is what influences my decisions or who I work with or why I started this business in the first place but you need to fill in those gaps for other people because they don't and it's seems really obvious to you but it's really not to others so yeah you can't I always sort of say about you know you need to be obvious about things like don't underestimate how obvious you need to be because people need that guidance so talking of which kind of yeah. um what was that move segue there <laughs> segue <laughs> putting stuff out there mm. I mean obviously we talk about branding and repositioning elevating all those kind of things um all the time obviously we love it it's what we do in our work and we just nerd out about it between ourselves anyway um and obviously and with our guests <laughs> and with our guests and any, anyone who will listen <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't get us started um so you're going through your own bit of repositioning mm. and I know it's been kind of building for a bit of a while but I know you've kind of got to that point of being in those kind of early stages and I know you've been quite vocal about it so you've I think, written a blog post I know you shared some some sort of aha moments um, in your newsletter and obviously LinkedIn um, you're always pretty visible on there so I'd be interested to know why you wanted to sort of share this early sort of stage of the reinvention process you know, being quite sort of visible and vocal about it um probably because it keeps me accountable 
if I keep telling people I'm doing it, I kind of have to do it because people then keep asking, how's it going? Um, I think there's there's something to that. There's an adage, isn't there, about building in public? Um, so I'm trying to do more of that. Um, and I think it's it is helpful and more human for other business owners to hear what it's like from the very beginning um, so that they can identify for themselves if they've reached a similar point, mm. understand what the obstacles are, um, what they're likely to come up against and face and have to work through, um, and why even people who are supposed to have it all figured out and it should be really easy um, <laughs> still struggle with it and have the same sort of challenges and gremlins and how you push through it because there's a not a higher purpose that sounds really wanky but um, there there is a an impetus behind it yeah and I think it highlights how no matter how you have kind of maybe like the tools and, and we know our process and we know it works and we've taken lots of clients through it, but it's actually quite different when you're looking at, at it yourself and having that clarity, because obviously, as you say, the kind of the mindsets, the gremlins, the little, who am I to do think this, you know, comes up. And so we're not immune to that just because, you know, we kind of work with um, other people on this process. It's good to highlight, I think, that it's normal. And obviously, probably a lot of the time we see the shiny end result of like, you know, look at this lovely new logo and look at all these, you know, lovely new posts and my new website and all the visual elements. But as we know, there's so much more to it and so much more that goes on behind the scenes I think it is good for people to actually know that as much as well depending if they're working with somebody or whether they're sort of tackling it themselves that as much as if you're getting help we're there to help guide etc cetera, etc cetera. but there is a lot of work that needs to come from you isn't it as the person going through that change to really dig deep and and figure out where you want that to go you know how much you want to bring of your own personality into your business personality or all those all those different things um so what have been what have you found challenging in terms <laughs> of <laughs> or maybe I should ask what bit haven't you found challenging <laughs> if any you know um, it's so much easier to do this the work for other people um and I not because you know, the questions and whatever that we're working through are particularly difficult. Um, I think because when you work with someone like you or I do, um, you're pulling out the shiniest stuff um, because you can see the shine in other people much more easily than you can in yourself. Yeah. Um, you just hear the negative stuff in yourself. And so there's, there's, there's the fact that you can see other people shine much more easily. There's also the fact that it's easier to push someone else out of their comfort zone than it is to pull yourself out of your comfort zone. Um, so working with somebody else does definitely make the stuff less icky. Um, and I definitely prefer doing it for other people. <laughs> um, uh, so my god my wobbles so far what have I found challenging uh well you called me a leader at one point and I had a mild panic attack frantic messages they're in slack going, oh, god I can't don't call me that, that. <laughs> and then I think I immediately said something to the effect of don't look at me <laughs> um but of course as per our conversation with Gemma recently, which, you know, this entire season um, has been really good for um, forming more of my thoughts around the role that I want to play and 
what my brand is doing for me and hearing all of our wonderful guests as well as you share their journeys um, and seeing our clients step up and shine and say, yes, I'm booking this. I'm getting asked to do this. That's amazing. I'm so pleased for them. And more of them would be doing that if I was being more visible. Um, yeah. And, you know, this entire season has been about visibility. And here I am still doing a little bit of hiding here and there. Yeah. Um, so I think the episode with Gemma kind of really brought that idea of anyone can be a leader within their life. Um, and- but that's the thing, isn't it? And I think again it's like we default to the kind of the person out front with the flag Mm -hmm. and I was thinking of the analogy of the fox pack where the leader is actually the one at the back making sure everyone's there everyone's safe you know the slowest ones are still being you know kept part of the pack like that's true leadership really um and so that was kind of how I positioned it to you is like yeah but it's in your own way it doesn't necessarily mean you've got to be you know appear like Gandalf with a staff (laughs) well I don't get a staff for that oh well you can if you want I mean oh come on (laughs) you can if you want um but yeah I guess and it's good it's good to it's good to challenge isn't it that sort of because you what you were saying to me was that you wanted to take up that space and as you say like it's you know it's for the benefit of your clients and so no nobody's helping anyone if they're you know taking a sort of back seat so to speak and not really stepping up and I think particularly as women we're not really taught are we to take space we're kind of traditionally more told to kind of you know cross our legs and make ourselves smaller and fit into small gaps and things like that so it's because see how that's a challenging thought but interesting to hear your thoughts on kind of like how you're working through that what that means to you um and where you're kind of where you're kind of at with because we are still in those early stages but sort of how you want to take that forward in terms of that sort of I don't want to say leadership role because now it sounds like we're back in a <laughs> again, but uh, you know what I'm getting at. I do, I do. Um, so I think it comes back to that whole mission, vision, values piece that we do with all of our clients. And for me, um, and I've been fairly public about this, I would like to be a published author um, as well as the copywriting work that I do. So it's how do I structure my business to enable me to do that, as well as there is going to be a need for me to be more visible if I'm ever going to get a publishing deal. Mm. So it's making it not a, oh, someday thing, and that will just magically poof. It appear in my lap. It's like there are some things that I need to do to make that happen. Yes, there's this manifestation is a lovely idea but you know we still need to do some work um and this is kind of a big part of it and in terms of the sort of leadership thing I think there was kind of a reframing for me and I'm having to constantly do it it's not a oh we've had this leadership conversation kind of early on and I'm no longer going to be weirded out by the idea of myself as a leader um that's just always going to be the case being introverted and a little bit on the shy side um I'm working on it um and I suppose there was kind of more of an analogy for me of well what if it's not just me stepping out into this weird ugly spotlight by myself what if my stepping out brings a whole load of people like the people that I want to work with into that spotlight so that they can have the impact that they really want to have on the world because they're going to be seen more because in stepping up yourself you naturally inspire or wanky as well but you no but that's fun (laughs) again don't downplay it don't downplay it because yeah I 
it's it's that permission slip thing yeah. um I mean I'm com- I'm uncomfortable with the idea of giving other people a permission slip in and of itself because I believe in sovereignty and personal agency um so I think all of the people that we work with are incredible and can do that stuff already um they don't need my permission for it but they do often say that the work that we do it Mm. has given them a permission slip to step up and be seen um in the role that they really want to embody but haven't up until now so it's that work really yeah and I think that's natural isn't it because there's you know as a as a human being you want that kind of bit of validation or somebody to say like yes this you know that is for you you can go and claim that and it just makes you kind of feel or or just allows you to really envision it I guess I'm thinking you know when when we did my repositioning and rebranding and I remember saying exactly that to you like you've given me permission to think beyond the simple impact of just the daily you know the physical like business owner has a website you know it's all great but like that knock-on effect that ripple effect that goes on what does that mean for their life for other people's lives like how you can then you can start to see all the things connecting and I feel like there is that sort of thing of like who am I to change the world but like we all do in our own little way you know like well so I love watching it's a wonderful life um at Christmas because so like we need reminding of that don't we and for anyone that doesn't know but it's you know it's it's the story of like if you take somebody out the equation the knock-on effect is so much greater than what you think you might think that you're not making a difference to people but actually you know it can be huge and we we all have that um and it's hard to see it so I think it yeah as you say that kind of permission slip is to kind of be bolder Mm. I think one of the other challenges is not just the who am I to um, question. It's who am I? <laughs> who do you get really tangled up in? Right. So how do I divide what is me and what is business? And mm. I've been doing this for a long time. And wait, <laughs> I don't even know who I am anymore. <laughs> you can reach that kind of point in it and feel really tangled. So mm. I think that's that's one of the sort of challenges or wobbles um, that we go through. And I have to some degree as well. I know the um, the slightly conflicted Pinterest board. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do do um, sort of ideas that I've been whacking in and the sort of down-to-earth minimalist approach versus this more playful um, approach that I've kind of been wondering about. Um, But that is the point of the Pinterest board is to dump a load of stuff and then sort of see what starts to stick and what can fall away. So I think that is an important part of the process that, yeah, it's interesting that themes start to come out and then you kind of work your way through that. And it's that refining process then really of like, okay, is that me just liking that because that's the kind of stuff I like or is this feeling right for the brand and is this feeling right for my business and is is this right for my ideal clients is when you can kind of start to, you know, refine that and get a lot more closer to the kind of heart of the business and then making that conscious decision of how much of you and your personality do you want to bring into it and that's a very conscious decision and everyone's different some people you know their personality is right out front and center some people it's like well I'm actually quite different from from my business in terms of um the the branding I mean I think it's probably quite hard to have your values completely different there's always going to be a massive crossover with that kind of thing. But in terms of the look and feel and the messaging, you know, your brand is its own entity, isn't it? Harder when you're a service-based business and a solo business owner, because, you know, you are the business essentially. So. Yeah. And that's where I was finding, I was getting a little bit stuck and tangled of what's what here and who needs what. But I think one of your questions was, well, what does your ideal client need to see? It's of course, of course, that's what it comes back to. That's what it always yeah. comes back to. 
I've okay. done, you know, a various various brand archetype quizzes over the years to, you know, do some soul searching and exploration. And that's what my current branding was pretty much based around um, the outputs of one of those. Um, but obviously that brand isn't serving me now and where I want to go in the future. Um, and so I was starting to think mm, this this business brand and the me are, are actually separate and they need to be separated in some way. Um, how we figure that one out? <laughs> That's another story. And I think part of that is, again, coming back to like, it's not all about you. Mm it is largely about your client and so I think that just kind of gives a bit of relief from like sort of you know it being too much pressure on yourself actually it's like okay well it's about them obviously you know we want to bring through those things that are going to help people connect and resonate that you know a part of your quirks or part of your humor or those little things of course you know at the end of the day it's it's a human to human interaction so we want those human elements to be coming through but ultimately the main focus is back on the client so I think that kind of I don't know makes it yeah. feel roomy then like okay I can I can work with this because yeah it's kind of giving you that focus again on on what's the right fit for them too yeah and there's also a thing about how much pressure you're putting on the visual identity without a copy and the messaging um, and positioning in that way because I think there can be a tendency to get sucked into oh the logo needs to tell this entire story all by itself <laughs> um, <laughs> if you see do you see people going down that road like no that's only a part of the story the rest of it is in your messaging and your copy so yeah. you know if you are slightly mischievous but also kind of minimal well you can have some of that coming through in the copy if you don't feel like it's fully coming through in the brand because there's no way you can embody all 99 of your per personal personalities <laughs> within a business branding piece no and I think it's nice to have those little nuances as well those little elements of surprise or you know that's what kind of makes a brand captivating and engaging is it's you know it's not all just up front and center and there's nothing else going on you know we certainly not where we come from and the and the sort of the more deeper work that 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 we um sort of champion and do ourselves and with our clients is there's room to play with that and bring through little you know anything can be overdone so it's nice to have those little things that can be sort of dotted through the messaging and as you say it brings a different sort of life into it which is why it's so important to work with those things together mm. rather than separate entities so because you um have obviously been quite vocal about kind of starting this repositioning as you say Kevin, that accountability um you were saying to me you've had a few interesting chats with people about since since mentioning that um do you want to tell me a bit about that Suddenly people are actually talking about my branding to me, which in the almost four years that I've had it, people <laughs> haven't. <laughs> so uh, one of those conversations, um, I've had a few messages on LinkedIn to the effect of, oh, I really like your branding. And three or Wait. four people have reached out, start conversations with me. And they're like, oh, my God, I love your branding. I love that swirly thing. And, oh, it's so beautiful. And it feels really calm. And I'm like, what the fuck are you no. the last four years when I needed validation? <laughs> <laughs> I joke. I joke. Um, it's just one of those weird ironies that yeah. I have been sent to test my resolve on whether I'm ready to make the change or not. Because then, of course, when I mentioned it to you, your first thing was, well, are they your ideal client? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which immediately made me laugh because I'm constantly wanging on about ideal yeah. clients. <laughs> and then you you yeah. said to me, you said to me, oh, you know, I like your branding. 
as it currently is but it's it's one thing being nice and beautiful and another thing it being aligned and connecting on that deeper level um you're like hey, do you still feel like you want to make this change like it, yeah yeah I'm still open to whatever comes through whether it's different colors whether it's an entirely different concept I think the point is I need to make a change it's still really funny that the point that I decided yeah. right that's it I'm drawing a line in the sand and I started talking about it publicly people <laughs> come to me and says I really <laughs> like your branding yeah you're like now you tell me now you tell me but I think it's good to have those little tests really because then it it does again bring you back to okay to know whether you're on the right path or not is sort of looking at those fundamental things you say like the the mission the values all those foundations but also you know if you're branding and that has is really holding you back in your business which is exactly where I got to then it's so important to also have something that's gonna sort of allow you to expand that is gonna have room for growth have you feeling like you can take your business to the next level or you know you've got room for it to develop and that also comes down to being like a commercially viable business because at the end of the day we're you know we're not hobbyists this is a business and we you know want to be commercially viable and so again it's like kind of that level of client and maybe appealing to those clients where you want to work at a higher level and maybe a higher price point and what does that mean and what does what does your brand need to say in order to enable that Mm. yeah and it's funny because one of the other conversations I had around my branding was with someone who was more design and minded um and they'd had a look at my website <laughs> at the minute I am in that place of, please don't look at my website Tim Bucket, <laughs> don't judge me on it <laughs> um we've reached that stage really um but they had a look at my website before we jumped on a um a networking call and they were saying oh you know your language and choice of words and stuff seems very considered and that initially felt like oh that's quite nice um, as an observation and then a little while into the conversation just <laughs> say so, I have to stop you there and tell you you are completely different to speak to to what you get from your website it's kind of down here and you're kind of up here um there are hand gestures for those of you who are just listening um yeah. <laughs> you're clearly like playful and I can tell that you've got a dark sense of humor and none of that's reflected in you what you've got there <laughs> busted. yeah <laughs> so busted <laughs> Oops. no you're absolutely right as I say this is something I'm aware of it is something I've started working on but it is funny that you should observe that at this point yeah um because I'm already in the process and it's yeah and it's a real compliment as well that you know that yeah don't undervalue yourself or don't you know undermine what you're doing at all with with where things are that's when you know you've got to kind of yeah have that sort of um what's the word I don't know repositioning because it's not a complete change you're not changing your fundamental services or what you're doing or there's no pivoting going on it's just really like a repositioning of where you've got to your business has developed you know and all those things and obviously like moving to the forest and all that's going to influence like where your business is going and where you want it to go and who you want to work with so exactly because it's again it's that sort of knock-on effect of you know you positioning your business in the right way which allows you to do the work you want to do that's more fulfilling again the commercial aspect comes in it allows you to live the lifestyle and support other businesses and 
um you know spend your money in the way that matches your values um and again i think that's you know sort of not always talked about as much in terms of you can do more good with with it so yeah i think at some point we're probably going to have to do an episode about money not being the root of all evil yeah (laughs) since that's kind of what you're alluding to there yeah i think sometimes that sort of thing of wanting to earn more or you know obviously again everybody's level of success is different and i'm not saying you know success equals money by any stretch but it's part of the picture isn't it because you still you know we're all here to hopefully try and live as uh congruently as we possibly can so whether it's traveling to far-flung places which is not me or you know solar panels and other really exciting things you know success looks different but in the society that we live in money is required for that it is required for that exactly um but yeah to, so to close out this this point <laughs> the weird and wonderful conversations i'm having so in terms of why i think people have been having these weird unsolicited conversations with me that were not connected to the messages i'd put out about the fact that i was doing this work um i think where you and I have been talking about visibility a lot that's probably prompted some conversations as well as I've been making increased efforts to make myself more visible and less wallflowery um, because I do have a wallflower tendency um, that I have to force myself out of Um, and I think my network has widened quite significantly partly with the move to forest partly with work that I'm doing on LinkedIn um, the podcast obviously I'm doing there's some guest stuff that I've got lined up for the autumn so I think because I've been actively going after opportunities that make me more seen that's invited more conversations about my branding and whether there's a match or a mismatch between how I'm showing up online and what you actually get yeah exactly and that's that's how you start forging those lovely connections isn't it with with um you know through that visibility and enabling people to comment and contact um that's where you know you get those real nice connections come through absolutely which is why you want your branding and positioning to do some of that legwork of connecting with the right people and so it's just sort of a natural Yes. Yeah. Yes. I just want it to make it easier for me. I think, and I think most other introverts and sensitive people would feel the same way of, well, if the branding and the positioning and copy is doing most of the legwork for you, that's just going to feel better being an introverted, shy, sensitive, however you want to put it. Um, person because you're not then feeling like you're having to expend lots of energy into putting yourself out there um, and being showy um, which tends to feel quite uncomfortable yeah for most of us and also whittles down those more uncomfortable conversations where you're not the right fit mm. so your conversations generally are like okay great yeah you know we get on whether it's a conversation whether it's a podcast guest whether it's someone you meet for coffee you know your local forest coffee shop or whether it's a potential client it's like that just becomes a bit of a okay what's the next steps rather than well actually is this the right fit you know I think um that that's part of the legwork that it does for you absolutely so what were the kind of giveaway signs of you know, where it kind of turned from rumblings of mm, maybe I need to sort of relook at this to like, okay, I need to do this repositioning piece now, this sort of rebrand and really thinking about how I want the future to look for my business. Question. Um I think, you know, this this entire series has been <laughs> 
a sign um and all of the conversations that we've had and um being so excited for you about your rebrand and I think I'd reached a similar tipping point but probably had done quite a while ago and just been ignoring it and soldiering through <laughs> so it might me if I would <laughs> ignore it long enough it'll go away <laughs> Yeah, just, just, you know, just ignore that symptom. It's fine. Oh, no, look, there's another symptom. No, no, let's ignore that. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll pass. Um, it hasn't passed. Um, it's been, you know, almost four years since I built that website in WordPress um, with very limited WordPress skills, as I think you and I have <laughs> discussed. Um, and please don't cry. But yes, I did create that logo in Canva and <laughs> every designer's listening into this shrieking <laughs> <laughs> nope, well, you know, nope. it, it, it it served a purpose yeah um and it's supported me in generating some really wonderful opportunities um and partnerships and collaborations um it's got me here um but as there's there's a saying that I kept finding kept cropping up and that I haven't been able to shake of you won't get there by doing what got you here um and there is that reality of that oh yes that that's quite true I'm not going to get to where I want and need to be by doing the same stuff that I did four years ago to get yes. started um I mean it, it wasn't quite the beginning of my business journey but we've talked about that previously um but this iteration of this business <laughs> yes. um has has looked like this for four years and um from the sort of getting my first clients and figuring out who I wanted to work with and dabbling um I'm no longer dabbling and I'm no longer figuring out who I want to work with I've got a pretty clear idea of it so it's time that everything reflected that and I'm you know I'm looking to make things more expansive and sustainable which does mean I need to be pitching to higher ticket clients and positioning myself as that leader <laughs> but <laughs> um it kind of reached that point of feeling more uncomfortable to keep things as they are and, you know, just ignoring symptom after symptom than to venture into what is effectively the bold unknown um, and make some changes. Um, so being ready for expansion and evolution and wanting to reach a new audience does require making quite a big change and as well if not just me and the fact that my life's changed quite a bit and my business shape has changed a bit um obviously the external landscape has changed enormously in four years um yes. without wanting to dwell on what happened over the last three years enormously um that's that has impacted all of us in lots of ways and there's also a you know, the practical reality that there are a lot more writers showing up online. So there's, I don't like to think of it as competition because actually we, we tend not to work in that way, um, the writerly group. Um, we take inspiration from each other and are quite supportive and it's a really lovely bunch of people, actually, as an industry. Yes, yes. yes. Um, but there is a reality that for our ideal clients there's someone to choose there's more people to choose from yeah Which and you want to make it easy you want to make it easy for them to know who's the right fit and as you say there's you know different clients will gravitate to to different copywriters and so it's it's your responsibility really to make sure that they're making a conscious decision based on fairly what what's in front of them so it's um as much as it might feel more scary to be kind of 
stepping up and and and, and uh, being more visible in that way it's actually you know you're doing a service aren't you really to other people you know your clients making their choices easier whether you are for them or whether you're not for them and it's fine either way because there's somebody else that's going to be the perfect fit for the one that you know wasn't perfect fit for you um but unless you're really putting those things out there that is going to help them connect with you or not then um then they're not gonna be able to make the best decision of whether you're for them mm. absolutely and um, you know this work is by no means a magic bullet you still have to once you have your new brick visual identity and your website and your copy and all of that you still have to show up and put yourself out there that is yeah. by no means done um, <laughs> <laughs> after this point um but it does enable you to do that more easily yeah and have that consistency of people recognizing what's you um you know quickly and easily mm. so it's yeah you can kind of also hone in on what's relevant and what's important because you know we can't do everything and as much as you kind of want might want to be pulled in different directions and interested in different things if you've got that solid business foundation and the values and the and the mission and the ideal clients I mean, that's just, that is almost like a magic bullet because it's like, just keep coming back to that. So I say, it's keep coming back because that's going to bring you back to the focus of of where you go next or what you do with, you know, your newsletter or your social media posting or whatever it is. However, you're connecting with people, networking events, speaking opportunities, all those kind of things. It makes your decision-making process so much easier when you're in that alignment absolutely so it does as you say the work is there um but yeah it makes things easier and I think that confidence piece as well you know we've both talked about how you know and I had another client say to me she was like I was literally sending people anywhere but my website you know I was just like LinkedIn like this this and it's like they were a very very visual business and um you know, we we did some some work and changed things around and really kind of changed things to really appeal to that ideal client. And it was like, oh, I've got strategies in place to drive more traffic to my website. Like, I'm really proud to share it. And it's like, that's the difference. And so that helps you get more visible. So if you're kind of in that, in that sort of stuck place of, I don't really want to share it and go anywhere else but there, <laughs> you know, that's massively holding you back. Mm not anyone that's that's kind of in that position which is I guess why it was important that we came on and discussed your journey kind of while you're right in right in the weeds of it and um and I'm sure we'll come back and do a, a bit of an after when you've when you've been through the process fully and have more to reflect on but I think there's I told some... you the condition of that, was that there <laughs> needs to be some kind of 90s montage going on right well yeah exactly people <laughs> have to check back to see how we pull that off (laughs) (laughs) our listeners if they have questions about how it's going or if they're feeling the same sort of way or they're resonating with um what we're describing in this episode um will be able to message me and see how it's going and how we're tackling um some of these obstacles as we go along because it's not a quick overnight process and um once this episode is out there uh there's still going to be a fair bit more of the journey to go so by all means drop me a note if this is something you need to chat about yeah um and obviously given this is such a kind of core element to our work and we know how much value it brings obviously we've been kind of working together a bit more deeply in terms of how this level of support can be um offered to our clients which is rather exciting it is so 
news on that will be coming fairly soon yes stay tuned people we are co-creating something just for you help help others through through this process because we we know how powerful it can be and just yeah you know it keeps coming back to those fundamentals doesn't it and how doing that work now will really I don't know save time save in the in the longer run because you're going to get something that that is the right fit absolutely so stay tuned